Okay, so I just mixed the yogurt with the noodles. It looks more like a, like a creamy pasta now. Mm. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you live from Kiva, Uzbekistan in Western Uzbekistan, Central Asia. I'm super excited because today we're exploring this living museum. As you can see, it's a walled city, there's four gates, it's protected by UNESCO, and right behind me is Kitar Minar, which means small minaret, and it actually was supposed to be double its height. It's a huge mix of colors, lots of beautiful designs. And today what we're doing is we're gonna go first to have some delicious local cuisine. Then after that, we're gonna go see some wood carvings, some silk weaving. We're gonna go to the top of a minaret, and then we're gonna explore the rest of the town. Are you guys ready? I'm so pumped. Let's go. Mumbarak Bulsan. Wow, so basically I make the bread, I put my, my seal on here, man. <laughs> wow. It's a big piece of bread, I don't need that much. Sorry guys. <laughs> mm. Oh, very soft. We almost have the nice layers. No, oh, it's really good. So we have three salads here. This is just a regular salad with some tomatoes, got some cucumber. And then over here we have two different salads. One of them has tomato and eggplant. The other one has eggplant. And I think we have like some, some carrots. What else is in here? I don't know, it looks so good. I love eggplant. Mm. Dude, it's the freshest thing ever. Wow, there's no spices here. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna have to like move to a different table, dude. All right, here we have another. Whoa, this is hot actually. Tomato-based soup, really hot. You got tomatoes, a little bit of eggplant. Let me try a tomato. Whoa, this country has some of the best tomatoes in the world. Oh my god, it's so hot though. As soon as I bit that tomato, it exploded. A big burst of gushing in my mouth. <laughs> what soup is this? Pumpkin cream. Pumpkin cream. Oh my god. All right, so next up we have this delicious pumpkin soup. Whoa, it's not moist. It's not moist. Oh man, it's super hot though. Yeah, it's it's not creamy at all. It's just straight pumpkin. Mm. It's it's like straight up pure pumpkin, like pure. All right, so our next dish is shuvi ashi, shuvi ashi, which is green noodles. And there's some beef, some carrots, some potatoes, and some yogurt. It looks freaking amazing. Super colorful. Love the green noodles. I haven't had green noodles before. Mm. Mm, different type of noodle. Very dry. Are you supposed to mix it up? Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm all about the slurping. Like in China and stuff, people like, <laughs> No, no, man. And the noodles, they'll slurp them like crazy. Yeah. Okay, so I just mixed the yogurt with the noodles. It looks more like a, like a creamy pasta now. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, this is the way you do it. Oh, this is incredible. Wow. So creamy green pasta with a nice piece of beef. Mm, you have to mix the yogurt. Plain, but not so good. Filled with uh, like a egg omelet. Okay. okay. Nice. And it's boiled, boiled. And what is it called? This, this is just the ravioli with a small uh, grinded beef. In it. Okay. Oh, wow. Tukhum barak. This is the name of this tukhum barak. This one says kotar barak. What's the ravioli? See, this is the big influence from the Silk Road, right? Bring the noodles and the dumplings and the wontons from China. Yeah, basically they came in, they killed all the men, took all the women, multiplied. So here we have the ravioli dish, right? So three different raviolis. This is egg, this is beef, and these are also beef, right? But this is a little different. I'm gonna try this one first. Just dip in that yogurt. It's like a slippery noodle in China. Then right here we have the egg. All right, so I'm gonna try this one without the yogurt first. Mm. This straight up tastes like ravioli in Italy. Oh, so good. It's really, really cold, and this is meant to be eaten in the summer months. Obviously, we're here in summer, August. And here we have the beef one. Mm. Mm. Oh, delicious beef. Super tender. Mm, no spice in there. I love that it's cold actually. That looks so good. I loved lunch by the way. You liked it? It was great. 
my, good stuff. my favorite thing was the pasta, like yeah. the green noodles <laughs> with the uh, you put the yogurt on top. Oh, so good. Oh yeah. Did you do that? And it was unique. That was something different. Like that was yeah. Tasty. You know what I like about it? It's like you you really like tasting the Silk Road. You know, China yeah. came through here, India went through here. Yeah. I don't really think the Indian. Dill, I dill, I dill pasta. Dill pasta. It was dill, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's like green pasta, like green pasta. Okay, no, yeah, let's do. All right, so right now we're walking through Kiva, straight to our hotel. We're gonna literally just drop our bags and continue. Wow, man. We got one this day to like, explore this just, wow, this place is. This place is stunning. Yeah. This is the type of places I like to go to. Like, I wanna go to every city like this. Yeah. You know? I know. I love the desert. I love the just blue, blue sky. Oh my God. The, the natural uh, kind of just earthen buildings. We just checked into our hotel. It's. Incredible, it's right here in the old city. And wow, this actually feels like I'm back in Morocco. Two-story building, probably was an old home. Stairway up here, over there in the back, there's the rooms, eight through 11. And this is my room number 16, as you can see. Oh, very nice, comfortable. So basically we got twin beds, got two seats, air conditioning, we got a fridge, TV, two closets, a place to put my bags, and we have right here the bathroom. Very nice, comfortable, modern. I mean, this is perfect. This is what you need. You gotta stay in like an authentic place when you come here. Uh, you know, I, I always recommend staying in the center of every single place. Definitely stay inside the city walls. You do not wanna be outside the city walls. No point in doing that. All right guys, let's go explore Kiva. Follow us. Hello, Vegas. Welcome to our ancient and wonderful city. My name is Tulkin. I will be your guiding today. This is the square called as a friendship square. Oh, because we welcome to every guest in here, in this place. Which place there was a wisdom here, it doesn't matter. We will come in this year. We will come out. So, this is called as a Ichan Kala city, which is the inside city. Ichan Kala, this is the, in our language. Tourism language called the Inchan, inside city. This part is the outside city, the Ichan Kala. So, Kiva became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the year 1990. It was the first one in Central Asia as a city. You know, there's obviously lots of sites that are UNESCO, but as an entire city that's still a living city, people still live here. That's why it's called a living museum. And I love over here, you can see the walls, the fortification walls right there. So there's four gates. This one right here, as you can see, it says everything is about UNESCO. Over here we have some of the mosques. Minaret, it's a huge mosque, man, huge. What mosque is that? This is the Madrasa. Madrasa. Yeah, there are many madrasas, mosques, minarets inside. So something you gotta do when you come to Kiva is you gotta buy yourself a traditional hat. Here, right at the entrance, inside the gate, you have five beautiful hats. I love this one. What is the cost of this one? What is the cost? 90,000? Okay, 50, 50, 50. Huh? Handmade. Handmade. 50? 80, 80. 80? 80. Okay. Okay, 50. Hey, negotiate. You have to negotiate when you come. Yeah, from? From America. Rahmat. Rahmat. All right, so that's that's my costume for the day. I'm dressed like a Kiva citizen. So this is the general map of the Ishan Kala, which is the inside city general map. It's a rectangular shape and surrounded by high walls. And the total length of the wall is a 2.2 kilometers. And one of the heads uh, from 10 to 20 meters height. And there are four gates to face the four sides of the vault. So we are now in here. And uh, there are 54 historical, archaeological and cultural monuments preserved until nowadays. And one of the, the difference from the other regions, this place, every pattern and every monument situated near to each other. So we don't need the transportation to see the one man to another one. So if you guys don't know about the Silk Road, basically it connected Europe and Asia. And it was a road that, that was made up of silk traders and then also people you know, trading spices. This is literally the, in the middle of the Silk Road. So they would use this place as a caravan spot. So people would come, you know, they were trading across the Silk Road. They would sleep here, sleep in a hotel, you know, relax, wake up the next day and keep going. Usually they would trade here as well. And right here, they have the caravans, right? So the guy right here, and then these are his horses with all the spices, the silk, the goods. This is the traditional headwear of the local Hiwan man. In the past, every man wore this type of the headwear called Chugurma. 
and uh, this is the chugurma made by the local masters and the main material was the sheep skin and every man wore this chugurma according to the position worn uh, more only in the winter or also every in the time. summertime every time you look good dude it's sick with the sunglasses does that work it works it works yeah you really blend in. A little bit of an anachronism here, but... <laughs> Pay attention. When yeah. you wear this chugurma, these stripes protect your eyes from directly sunlight. It, it really does. But at the same time, I can't see anything. Yeah. So, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's nice. You know, the only thing is, if I wore this right now, I'd probably bake all day. I'm wearing a lamb skin right now. Yeah. Lamb skin. I'd rather have this one on. <laughs> this is a lot cooler. Hi! Do you look cooler with sunglasses? It's like your hair. Like yeah, you do, you do. Yo, assalamu alaikum. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? You good? I'm good, and you? You love this place? I love it already. We're gonna go eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Some yeah. kind of little hat. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. 15,000, I think. 15. Uzbek 15 Uzbek. 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 Name, 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 name of money? 5,000. Some, some. 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 Okay, that's the first time Uzbek I've heard it, so good to know. Some. There's 5,000. 10,000. Uh oh. This is the like the family trade, the continuing tradition, which is that every father should tell his son to, le, to teach his like the general traditional work. Wow. There maybe the continuing the maybe the seventh and the, or maybe the sixth and seventh generation, which is the continuing father's job. So what are they making? They're making chairs, right? That's yeah. What making? So this the chairs uh, called as a lauk, which is the a reading book in the past. Every student of the madrasa equipped this type of the love for reading book. Yeah, this is so sick right now. Like, I love this. Yes. I'm all about like, you know, traditional carvings. You know, craftsmanship is something that's like being lost around the world. And I love how this part of the world is really keeping the traditions alive, teaching their kids about this. And uh, yeah, hey, you don't have to go so hard, man. <laughs> yeah, look at this. I mean, I think this chair is, so it's a fold out chair, right? It's a fold. Whoa. Like you're a pro at this. Yeah, I have one from Africa, but okay. this, this one's really nice. Yeah, I, this is actually not done. They still have to sand it, right? Okay. But that one's amazing. I love the fish. Yeah. This object uh, called as a lauk in Arabic countries, which is the, in the past every madrasa student equipped with this type of lauk for reading books. Oh wow, it's for reading books. Yeah. So these are all for reading books. Uh, wow. Yeah, this is the main master, headmaster. Hey. Three. Four, five, six, eight, nine. All right, so right here we have a few different plates. We have jewelry boxes, and over here we have like cutting boards. And these cutting boards are really, really cool. So you can see the fish, like the guys were carving outside. You see the fish in every single one of these. And these cost about 250,000, so roughly like 25 bucks. I mean, if you really want it, definitely highly suggest you buy it. Over here, this is like a, I think this is a plate, right? I'm guessing it's a plate, you serve something on top, you know, you know, whenever you're having guests over, put some cheese, some cold cuts. That's everything you buy here. I'm unfortunately not buying anything, I'm like, I, I bought too many things already. If I find something I really love, I'll buy it, but right now I'm good. So this place, as you can see, the main uh, carpet workshop in Hiva, in Ichan Kala in here and uh, if the young lady wanted to weaving the carpet she can weave in here she will start as a new beginner in here and uh, she uh, start asked from the teacher like the teacher in here and she, she had has to be more patient if she complete one carpet they spend at least half a year every day work half year according to the size of the carpet even as they spent also two years for completing bigger size carpet because the ornaments also very different difficult which is the chain from the monuments as you can see on the surface of the monuments blue tiles they uh, try to weaving surface on the carpet and here are now the 10 girls working in here and they also export uh, make the exporting these carpets maybe abroad so there's three rooms here where you can see the ladies weaving as you can see it's really hand woven silk there's no machine here the ladies going one by one putting it in cutting it putting it in cutting it she has design right here so she knows exactly what she's gonna do yeah i mean just amazing really amazing and you can see the silk different colors so you got light blue blue black 
This is like a light yellow, green, more blue, and then lots of more colors here. Wow. So the next place, we go to the tallest minaret in the Central Asia. In no. Central Asia? Yes. What? I'm sure for that. I didn't know that. Central Asia. We're about to climb the tallest minaret in Central Asia, right outside on the street. It's straight out of a scene of Aladdin. Feels like Aqaba right here. Everything is super clean. Lots of vendors selling like, you know, bracelets. So this place, the one of the famous and the ancient cemetery in the Ishankala, which is the famous saint buried in here, called Palawan Mahmud. 200,000 in Sum. 200,000 Sum. Sum. Wow. So it's basically what? $20? 20 euro. 20 euro? So basically, it's a state that protects your house from the devil. You put it on your wall. Yeah. The top is the minaret. It's the minaret right there. <coughs> 200,000, huh? Yeah. 150. Yes. All right, so I negotiated 150. I can't find a mask in this country, so I guess I'm going with a stick to put on my wall. And what I like the most about it is that it has the minaret, the minaret of the city, the iconic minaret, and obviously, I gotta do it. What, $15? $15 for this? I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. There you go. How many steps is it? How many steps? 118 steps? That's not so bad. Yeah, the big steps, and you have to bend over when you go up. Yeah. The minaret. I know, I know how it is. So it's big step, and you have to bend over because it's low. So you have to like get through. All right, all right, let's go. 118 steps to the top. This is gonna be a brutal one. They're saying super steep steps. Gotta be careful with your head because it's very short ceiling. Wow. Jules, I don't know. It's gonna be hard. Yes, too hot. Super steep. <laughs> All right, this is really one of the hardest towers I ever climbed. Seriously, guys, this is not an easy one. We are literally, I'm crawling up a wall here. This is how steep it is. Hands, hands, hands. Okay, right, guys, when you come here, do not bring a bag. Come with your camera. That's it. Oh. All right, we made it to the top. Oh my God, that was not easy. Ooh, it wasn't so bad. Hey, Bobby came. Incredible views over all of Wow, I see the fortified walls. Wow, I love this place. This feels similar to some places I've been to in Morocco. It's the same feel. Desert, you know, very like mud, stone, sandstone buildings, and it's a very small place. I mean, as you can see, the walls are right there, 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 and right there. Really, really beautiful. I love visiting places like this because you really see what these people did 2,500 years ago. 2,500 years ago, you know, America's only like 400 years old. This is 2,500 years old. Yo, yo, Jordan and Joey, what's up? My Florida crew. Hey, oh yeah, all oh, three yeah, of us. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. We're flow riding. Flow riding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's us. <laughs> all right, let me get down. You good? Yeah. I'll just stick to the right. That was an awesome view. But these stairs, look at this. Oh, I'm a... So now you know if you want to come up to the tallest minaret in Central Asia, it's 118 steps, very steep. Be careful with your head. And when you get to the top, it's a very small, like little observation deck, incredible views. But really be careful because when the you know staircase exits, it makes a really big hole on part of the observation deck. You can easily fall down. And that's basically it, guys. Let's get out of here and go finish up our exploration of Kiva. All right, I made it out. Whoa. And it, oh, and it only took like three minutes to go down. Not so bad. Five minutes up, three minutes down.
are now in the main ancient mosque in Ichankala called Friday Mosque, which is the Juma. Please welcome. We can see the everything the inside. Best thing. So this is the biggest mosque in Kiva. It is back to the 10th century and what's impressive about it is this huge room. So you can see 213 pillars. Each one is completely different and they're put in mathematical order. So they were carved, right? So they have these beautiful designs and they're all different. Wow, so many. And this, this mosque is not in use, but right now they're doing something over here. I don't know, they're doing like a little school session. And yeah, it's basically it. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, very beautiful. Takes takes ten minutes to see it. This is the uh, look at this the pillar, uh, the, the one of the biggest and ancient pillar in the inside the, this mosque, almost thousand years old. So this is the Muhammad, I mean Inak Madrasa, which is the uh, founder of the Kungurat dynasty, and he was the first like the king in the Kungurat dynasty, which is the ruler in. Next up, we're about to enter the new palace, and right in front of the palace, we have like the original road, a 200 year old road. And here, you can actually see the trace of the carriage of the king right there. I mean, he went over it so many times, just like engraved there for life. Wow, 200 years, huh? Big stones. It feels like Roman roads right here. So, this is the king's carriage, which is the gift from the Russian em Emperor Alexander II in 1876. It's the European style carriage until the border of the Hiva Honeid, they brought by the train. This is the reception of the palace. Wow, man. This is incredible. Super high ceilings. I love the blue tiles. It's epic. 19th century. 19th century, this palace? Wow. That's just incredible. It's amazing. No, it truly is, though. Actually, it's really cool that this um, tile here is in this stage like that is still here because mm -hmm. i have no idea how old it is but it looks really old <laughs> so i'll tell you it's over 100 years old for sure uh, -huh. uh on both sides we have this huge array of tiles easily like i don't know 50 feet high on the top we have like nice symmetrical um i guess it's wood right that's all wood on the top so there's patterns but right there you can see that's actually i think it's arabic yeah. So I think it says something, like something about Allah. So this is the uh, caravansary, the main building inside for Karasir Road Caravans. This is a two-story building. When the caravans visiting here, they rent these uh, rooms for one, one month. The oh. first floor for shopping and second floor served as a hotel for merchants. And basically right now what it is, is a big bazaar. You have everything for sale here, plates, clothing, hats, you know, bags, ah, ceramic, ceramic, okay, ceramic. And artistic works. Wow, lots of artistic works. Everything looks really nice. I love the hats again, man. <laughs> really, really nice stuff. I love these little bowls, like what, shot glasses? Yes. Wow, look at all the ceramic. Incredible. Yeah, I'm just looking around, thank you, thank you. Wow, this place is big. So many things here, look. I should probably get one of these for tonight. Dress the part. I don't know if I'm gonna buy anything here. I'm like sort of done shopping. And basically you're gonna find everything very similar. This is probably the most traditional thing in Kiva, right? The hat, it's really amazing. So today we explored Kiva, a 2,500 year old city in Western Uzbekistan. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's a must visit when you come to this country. We ate some delicious food. We saw all the major attractions here. We went up to the top of the minaret. I bought some goods, I bought a hat. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan. Peace.